Do you remember the alien planet demo from my previous video? Its hype map data was 256 megabyte, and this is the same trend which its hype map data is only 13.7 megabyte. This is because I made an algorithm for compressing hype map data and I put that inside entering plugin. But how that work and how even this is possible? In this video, we are going to find out. So the story began when I searched a lot for an open source algorithm for height map compression on internet. Unfortunately, I did not found anything good which satisfied me. You know, we have a lot of open source compression algorithm for images like PNG, JPEG, and many more, but I couldn't find a good one for height map. The only thing that I found which people talk about that is something in Unity Asset Store which is called a tiny train. So let's forget about that and let's come back to our open source philosophy and let's make from the scratch an algorithm for compressing height map. And by the way, maybe later I extract this algorithm and create an open source format for height map written in C++ so everyone can use that even people don't use Godot. So to start to give you an idea about how this works, this is a flat train which its height map image is 1024 pixel by 1024 pixel. And before compressing that, its size was around 4 megabyte if you store that as a floating point. But now its size is 327 bytes, not even 1 kilobyte. And that is because when your train is flat, this algorithm can smash your train and compress that a lot. As another example, I have this train which has a slope. And this also is stored in a file with size of 112 kilobyte, which still is a lot of compression. So in this video, I'm going to explain a step by step how this has been achieved. I start with some most simple compression rules and then slowly we arrive at the point which we can reduce our height map this much. So first rule is quantization. Imagine you have a set of integer number like this. I store this inside an integer which takes four bytes. But as you can see, none of the number is greater than 255. So why don't I reduce my data type from 4 byte integer into 1 byte integer? And believe it or not, this simple rule is one of the fundamental things in many compression algorithms. So quantization sometimes come at some cost. For example, if I have a double number which take 8 bytes and I convert that to a float number which takes 4 bytes. In this case, as float has less precision compared to double, we might lose some of our precision. Now let's see how this rule will apply to train. So imagine this is our train and the highest point on my train is 255 meter and the lowest point is zero. Okay, now I want to store my train height map pixels in one byte of integer. As you know, one byte can store a value between zero and 255. So in this case, if I have a height map pixel here, I cannot store that inside my one byte integer. I have to put that in upper or lower position. In another word, in this case, the valid height map pixel can have a value of one, two, three, four, and so on. Not for example, one point half. Now imagine we have another train which the highest point on that train is 127 meter. So in this case, if I want to store my height map pixel in one byte integer, this time my height map value can have the value of zero, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, and the highest point which has the value of 254. So as you can see, as the difference between the minimum height and the maximum height gets smaller, I can express my train with higher accuracy with the same data type. In first case, I could express each height map pixel with one meter of the accuracy, and in the second case, I could do that with half meter accuracy. So this is the first rule and this is the base of everything. But this by itself is not enough for compressing our height map. Now as an example, look at this train. Part of it is flat and part of it is not flat. What if I can store each part of the train separately? Obviously, if I can divide my train somehow, I can store the flat part with less information compared to other part. So here I use quad tree to divide my train. But what is a quad tree? Quad tree is a general algorithm for dividing any two dimensional space. The way its work is like this. You have a region in two dimension. That region can have four children, like this. Also, each of these children can be divided to four other regions and so on. 
Quattri is used in many places like in physics engine to reduce the collision calculation and here in the code training channel, one of my favorite YouTube channel, he explained how you can do that and also I saw some use that to compress an image with Quattri, like this image, which used a Quattri for compression. So we have our height map and we want to divide that by a Quattri and store the flat part differently. So how we can do that? And we asked a very good question, how? This is where I found a way to create the most optimized quad tree possible. I mean the most optimized quad tree with the lowest data size possible, which you cannot find anything better than this. First, we should define how much accuracy we want. This number is defined by user. For example, I define the accuracy to be 0.1. This means the maximum error which each height map can have should not exceed this number. Now let's divide this height map with quadri as much as possible. I mean we define a minimum quadri block size and we divide all of our quadri up to that minimum size. Now we have something like this which is similar to a grid. So imagine this is the smallest block of our quadri. I calculate the minimum and the maximum height for this block and I also calculate the difference between them. So depend on how much is the difference between the minimum and maximum height, I can define the data in this block with different data type. So if the difference is smaller than the accuracy, I can define my block as a flat block. This means we don't need any data block for this section and we can define height of all of this point in this block equal to a single height. Now imagine there is a big difference between the minimum and maximum height. In this case, we store each of our point in a float which takes four bytes. After that, if train in this section is more flat, I can store my height map in two byte integer. And if my train is more flat, I can express my height in this section only with one byte integer. But what if my train is more flat? In that case, we divide one byte in two parts and store each number in four byte. And even if our height map is even more flat than this, we divide one byte into four part and store each height map pixel in them. The algorithm which I implemented support all of this. Now let's go back to our smallest block. By a magic which we call it mass, I can calculate the exact data encoding for this block and also I can calculate how much data require this block. Now this block has a parent, is that right? And that parent also has four other children. So as the parent of this block, we can calculate how much data will take these four children all together. So up to this point, we know if we divide this block, how much data that will take. Now imagine we don't want to divide this block. We can calculate how much data this block need without dividing this like before. So here we have two options. One is dividing and one is not dividing. And we know each of them how much data will take. We see which one takes less data and we choose that path. So you agree up to this point we have the most optimized data size. Now we go back one more step and we take a look at the parent of this block. We have the most optimized size for four of its children and we will see if is it better to divide this or not. We repeat this process until we arrive at the root of the quad tree. And on that case, we know what is the best optimized way to divide our tree. Well done. I hope you understand what is happening up to this point. Now imagine this is the most optimized quad tree. The main question is how I should store this and how can I recreate this back? Basically, we cannot store a tree on hard disk. The only thing that we can store is a long array of bytes and how we can do that. Let me show you how one block will get a store. We have one byte as the header of each block and this one byte header always exists. The first byte on right shows if our block contain holes or not. That is for support of holes, which I won't go in depth of that. The next three bytes show what kind of data encoding has this block. And the last four byte on left show what is the depth of this block in quad three. That is really necessary when we want to decode our data and we want to recreate a quad tree. For example, the root tree has the depth of zero, but if I divide that, each of this child has a depth of one. 
and as I divide this more, the depth will increase. Well, after this block, we have two more information which contain the minimum and the maximum height of this block. But depend on the type of the encoding, this can change. For example, flat encoding need only minimum height. So this is different for each data encoding. Also, this minimum and maximum height can be encoded with different data type depend on the difference of minimum and maximum height of the entire height map. After that, we have the data block itself, which can be encoded in different data type encoding. For example, flow, two byte integer, one byte integer, and so on. Also for flat data encoding, we don't need a data block. So now we know how one block of the quad tree get stored. After that, we store each block like this in a row. So this is how we store our data and how we can decode that. Well, we read each header and we recreate the quad tree based on the information which each header give us. But one small error can lead to a disaster. Imagine when I decode my header, instead of this byte, I read the next byte as header. Then we don't know what the random number that will give us and we calculate everything wrong up to end. Okay, now the first part is done. But the compression story is not finished here and we can do even more. Imagine this grid is our height map which each pixel has a specific height. You can see as we move from left to right the height increase. Now if I subtract each column by its left column we can arrive at the height map which is much more flat. And that second height map has the capability of being compressed much more with our quad tree and quantization algorithm. So we should find a way to pass our uh, height map into a filter and then compress that with our quad tree quantization algorithm. This type of compression is called delta encoding. Delta encoding has a great application in encoding images and even videos. For example, if I divide two frames of a video, the part of each frame which does not change become black and that can be compressed much more easily. But in our case, how we can do that? This has a very simple solution, but unfortunately I stuck here for a long time. So at first I tried to implement a similar method which PNG compression implemented. I even wrote thousands lines of code, but unfortunately that did not work. I done a lot of research and I even tried more ways. And at last I found a simple solution. So imagine we have a train in two dimension for now. Here I try to create a line which the sum of the distance of that line to each point has the minimum value. So this model is called linear regression and I calculate this line by least square method. I don't go inside the mass of this method. You can search about this on internet. But right now imagine I have this line. This line has this formula which b0 is a constant number and b1 is a slope. Now at each point I calculate the height on my line and then I subtract that by the height of that point. And if I do that for all of my points, all of my points will come to a flat plane. And as I just want to make these points flat, I remove the constant from my formula and my point become like this. Now the good point about this is that I can recreate my original height with 100% of accuracy if I can recreate that line. And how much information I need to recreate that line? Only one float. So I made my points flat only by one extra floating point data. So now let's go into three dimension. In three dimension, we need two floating number, one for X and one for Y to calculate a plane. And of course, also here we can ignore the constant value. Now we don't need to create a plane for entire train like this. Instead, we divide our train to a smaller section and we make plane for each section, like this image. After subtracting the height of each pixel from its corresponding plane, our train become like this. But no worry, we can recreate everything back with 100% accuracy. And this train is much more capable to be compressed with other algorithms which we talked about. So after adding this, we can even reduce the size of the height map a lot. But can we compress this even more? Well, before talking about that, I want to mention something. What you can see here is a result of immense research and work. And I enjoyed every bit of that because I love programming. 
If you like my work, consider supporting me on Patreon because that's really help to continue more and create more open source stuff. But that is completely optional and everything is free and open source for everyone. And now let's get back on our question. Can we compress that even more? What I am going to talk here is not applied yet. So I'm not sure yet about that. One way to compress this even more is to not use only flat plane to flatten our train. We can use curved plane, or in another word, we can calculate the coefficient of x and y in power of 2. This way our plane become a curve and we can create more flat train. Well, this sometimes can reduce our data size, but in some cases, it can also increase our data size as we store two more floating points for each curved plane. I think in this case, we should write an intelligent algorithm which can select which way to go. And you can also add more compression by adding LC compression algorithm and other type of general compressing algorithm, which I will not discuss about them here. I will create another video about how to use all of these compression system on my mtrain plugin, and I will put the link of that video in the video description. If you have any question or suggestion, let me know. Have a good time until the next video. Bye.